Hi guys, hey, it's Ann over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on my red wiggler only bins. I'm going to start doing a different video for the red wigglers than I do for the European night crawlers so they can have their own playlist. So, looking in on here, looks like we've got quite a few sprouts again. That's okay, they'll eat. Kind of looks like I'm having a springtail thing. I think I fed coffee last time. I don't know what it is about coffee and springtails. It almost creeps me out when I'm drinking coffee. I'm like, are there springtails in coffee? I don't know. There's a lot of them. Not enough to make me quit drinking coffee, but I digress. Alrighty. So, trying to find where I fed. Paper bedding is getting nicely worked over. Yep, quite a few springtails in there. But they're helpers, so whatever it is that the worms need help with, the springtails will help them. You know, and if it's a friend of the worms, they're a friend of mine. It appears to be breeding season. Sorry guys. Keep flipping through little by little till we find where I fed last. Oh, there it seemed to be concentrated, but I don't see anything but coffee there. Okay, so I think almost by default it's got to be at this end. So let's see if we can find a worm ball. No, oh, might have been too late. Well, kinda. I mean, there's a large concentration in there, but looks like they've they've eaten all the banana but the stem. That's okay. They will get food today. Aside from that banana stem, oh, there's a little bit of a banana. Okay, so, as usual, at the last minute they make a liar out of me. So I see a little bit of the banana stem and a little banana peel, but that's not enough. They're going to need more than that. Alright, so what I do have, I also have a treat for them. Basically, bought a melon, abruptly forgot about it. So, this should be really nice treat for the worms. Any sort of melon, um, anything like that, and they do just love it. So I'm going to cover that up, Oop. put the banana peel in there, and that should w last them a week. There's still not a huge, huge concentration of worms in here, and I do not want to overfeed and take a chance of uh, having things rot um, or ferment in the bin. Um, that's not good for anybody. So then I have another little bin of red wigglers, and I'm going to move you over to them now. All right, here is the tall bin of red wigglers. So let's see what they're doing. They also got some coffee, but I don't really see a lot of springtails. They divided the bin, and it's it's kind of an unofficial experiment. I uh, was going to just put them in a horizontal bin as opposed to this deeper bin that's probably about nine inches deep, as opposed to that other bin that's about five inches deep. I'm not doing it as a proper experiment, um, just kind of maybe more of an observation, or maybe I should consider it an experiment. Put the comment below, do you think I should make this a proper experiment and check the size of the worms later? Um, so anyway, most people will say the worms will be bigger if they have more surface area. Even though they are the same volume, um, obviously this one is tall and short and the other one is short and long. So I have no idea what I just said there, but you know what I mean. All right, kind of going through here. Lots of fresh bedding.
Okay, found the last time of food. I can smell the oranges for sure. So they've got, I don't know if I fed them heavier than the other one or... Sometimes it just happens that way where one bin will finish up faster. I think it has to do with whatever state the food was when you gave it to them. If you feed them identically, they should go through it identically if there's the same amount of worms. Um, but if the food is maybe less degraded, then uh, it will take them longer to go through it if you give them a fresh apple versus something that's been frozen. That's a kind of sticky, so I'm going to move that up. Maybe it'll dry out a little bit. I was having problems, especially with these bins that are deeper, with the very bottom getting super wet. I think that is one of the telltale problems of having a deep bin is that this bottom um, gets gets wet and if you have a lot of holes down there where there's a lot of moisture then the worms are going to escape so you can't really have bottom you know holes at the bottom in a deep bin because otherwise the worms will run away all right let me make sure I go down deep enough over here make sure there's oxygen getting down there and that it's not super wet. A lot of people don't like to go through their bins like this, it's yucky or whatever, um, but the truth of the matter is if you don't go investigating then you don't know what's happening in your worm bin. And you know some people would say you don't need to know what's going on, the worms are going to do their own thing. Nah. But I'm the one who's you know intruding and putting food in here and stuff and things don't always go to plan so if you don't keep an eye on things then you don't really know what's happening. And you could be setting yourself for an anaerobic conditions in the bottom, or maybe all the food went to the bottom and is becoming anaerobic and is fermenting and that could cause problems with the worms. So I would rather be safe than sorry. Maybe it makes me a helicopter parent for my worms, but um, I would rather be safe than sorry. So since they have a little bit of food left, I'm just going to give them one piece of the melon. So just in case it's been over a week by the time I get back here again, they will have something that is in the works over there while they are finishing up the oranges from over here. Alright guys, let me know what you think. Um, if you've done this experiment where you've had a, a taller bin versus a shorter bin and what your results were, were they the same, were they different? Um, I do enjoy reading the comments and I try to answer every single one. So if you have questions, um, feel free to ask them. I'm always, I love to interact with everybody and make sure that I can pass on any knowledge that I have learned along my way. Alright guys, well if you like the video, give me a muddy thumbs up. And if you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that little bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.